Okay, uh, in this video we're going to go through some slightly more complicated parts of bash scripting. I'll show you uh, grep and a few of the other more useful commands, but uh, let's, let's start off by just making a brand, brand new bash script just to remind you, and we're going to call it advanced bash, but we'll spell advanced right, uh, and then we'll start with our shebang, which has been bash. And first we'll, uh, we'll assign a variable. Um, so I'm going to make a new variable called welcome and give it the value hello with an exclamation mark in there. Um, be very careful in bash spaces matter so it has to be a variable has to be assigned like this without any spaces between the equal sign and uh, the string itself. And then if I want to retrieve the value of that variable, uh, say print it out, I use echo dollar sign and then welcome. Um, just to show you what happens if I don't do that, if I put another echo in here and just go welcome, uh, it will just print the, print the text welcome. So let's run that. I'm going to go chmod plus x and then advanced bash dot sh so that it's executable and then I'm going to run that script. So dot slash advanced bash. There we go. So you can see the, the two different outputs of there. The first one just prints the string of letters W-E-L-C-O-M-E -E, and the second one prints out the value of that variable. Mostly this isn't anything massively new. But what I want to show you now is what happens um, when we start to use different types of quotation marks and backticks. So the example there is a literal string. So all those characters will be printed out as they are seen. To give you a different way of doing something similar, let's make a second variable called welcome to, and this time I'm going to put it in double quotation marks. This is called an interpreted string, and for what we've got in there at the moment, they are functionally identical. So it's welcome followed by welcome to. Let's exit, yes, run the script, and we can say that they are printing exactly the same thing. So where does this become interesting? Well. Let's have a look at some of the uh, kind of special variables in Bash. Let's say you wanted to give your Bash script some arguments. Um, this value here, $1, that will return the value of the first argument given to the Bash script. Um, $2 will give you the value of the second argument given to the Bash script, and so on and so forth. And importantly, $0 will return the name of the Bash script that is being run. So um, Let's let's use some of those. Uh, let's put them in here. Dollar zero. Dollar zero. And this is where you'll see the difference between two commands. So this one up here with the single quotation marks, this will print out exactly what you see on the string uh, on the screen. This is a literal string. It will print out these characters in this order. This one down here will print the hello exclamation mark. But then the dollar zero, because it's an interpreted string, it will recognize that as a variable. And so instead of printing out dollar zero, it will print out the value of that variable instead. So let's see that in action. Go back run the bash script, and there we go. We can see the first one gave us the literal string, hello, $0, and the second one gave us an interpreted version of the same string. So that's the difference between your single and double quotation marks. The final thing that I want to mention, though, is what happens with backticks, because backticks are uh, allow you to do something slightly more complicated in bash scripts. They allow you to embed commands within commands. What do I mean by that? Well, let's create one more one more variable called test value, for example's sake, um, and I'm going to make it a string, and that string is going to be um, the IP address of this machine is blah, and then we're going to have to find out what is the IP address of this machine. So uh, in many examples we might have to go away, look up the IP address, come in, type it back in here, but what we'd really like to be able to do is to grab the IP address and automatically insert it into the string, and then have it printed out, so echo test value. Before we do that, let's go and see some other command line tools that might help us do this uh, that we've actually seen before. So I'm going to close that out. So, for example, we now know the command ifconfig, and if we type ifconfig uh, at the command line, it will print out a whole bunch of information about the different interfaces of these files. Now, what you'll notice in here is that there are 
two different interfaces which have two different IPv4 addresses. So the top one is 1030.72.86 and the bottom one for the local loopback is 127.0.0.1. Wouldn't it be wonderful if there was a way we could just grab these lines out of the file instead of grabbing all of this information every time? Well, it turns out there is. It's very simple and it is a tool called piping and a grep. So what we need to do is we need to find a unique identifier on the lines that we want. So I'm going to use that four letter phrase um, INET, the one that starts uh, the line of the IP addresses. And watch what happens if I type ifconfig pipe which once again is the character above the enter key on your keyboard. Um, hold shift and push that, you get the pipe character. And they're going to use this tool called grep. And grep is great for matching things. So all I want to do is match the string that I'm looking for. So I'm going to type inet. What that will do is it will just return the lines in ifconfig that have the four letters inet in them. Okay? There are, it turns out, four of those lines. There's the IPv4 address and the IPv6 address. So uh, I'm going to make this slightly uh, a slightly better search and I'm going to go inet space ADDR. By putting it in quotation marks I mean it is a string and now I have config will only return those two lines. So what does have this have to do with bash scripting? Well let's say I wanted um, uh, I wanted to only return the IP addresses within a bash script without having to come out and look them up like we're doing now. I can take that command, this one here that we've just created, and I can stick that straight into my bash script, in fact straight into a string inside my bash script, just using backticks and it will be printed out. So remember that command here, let's go back into our bash script, back into here, and I'm going to put in two backticks. The backticks mean interpret this as a command before you print out the value. So our command was ifconfig pipe grep inet. Um, we'll just use inet for the moment. Um, and let's print that out. Let's run that script rather. And so what you can see is that it's actually printed out the results of that ifconfig grep that we did. Uh, hopefully some of you have noticed that actually if we wanted just the uh, the uh, first interface's IP address I could search for the string bcast uh, because that's only in one of those lines so I'm going to go back into my bash script and change this up from inet to bcast and dot slash there we go the IP address of this machine is so it now contains that entire line but we've now inside our bash script abled our bash script to identify what is the IP address of the machine itself now if we wanted to filter that ever so slightly we can use our final really useful command line tool which is a tool called uh, awk or awk so let's go back into our bash script and add one more value we've got another pipe and then we've got AWK, curly brackets, and then um, we've got single quotation marks inside here, and then the word print, dollar, uh, let's go dollar two at the moment. What AWK does is it splits that line up that grep returns into individual characters. And dollar one uh, into individual words. Dollar one will be the first. Dollar two will be the second. Dollar three will be the third. And so if we run that out again, assuming I haven't made any typos, we've now trimmed that right the way down and returned only the IP address rather than uh, the entire line. So using by changing that dollar two that we saw in the bash script to a dollar one we could get earlier or later values within that line but we'll leave this video there because that was quite quick and complicated uh, this goes just shows you how you can embed your different commands inside your bash script in a few different ways